Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the agitator shaft seal on your washer. It's a really easy job. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the washer. So typically you're just going to pull it far enough forward that you can unplug it. If that's not convenient, locate the electrical panel, turn off the appropriate breaker or remove the appropriate fuse. Now our next step will be to raise the main top and lid assembly so that we can access the tub. The top is secured to the front panel with a couple of spring clips located right at the top of that front panel. So take a thin blade putty knife, just slide it into that gap, slide it over until you meet resistance of that spring clip. You should feel the spring pushing against you. Just push it in and then lift up slightly on that top, hold it up, do the same on the opposite side. Then you can raise your top up and have someone either hold that up or have your washer positioned so that you can tilt it back and support itself. Now that we have the main top up, although it's not necessary to remove the front panel, we will do so just to make it easier access for the clips for the tub cover. The front panel is held to the cabinet with two 516 screws on the top edge, one in each corner. So simply remove those. And then just let that panel tilt towards you and unhook it from the two clips at the bottom. And then just set it aside. Now next we'll remove the fabric softener dispenser from the top of the agitator if your model is equipped with that. If not, you just move the cover from the top of the agitator. So just pop that off and we'll set that aside. Then with a the ratchet, a long extension and a half inch socket, we'll remove the retaining bolt for the agitator. It's straight down through the center. And you can either remove just the top half of the agitator if you have an auger style, or lift up on the base of the agitator and pull the whole unit up. Now next we're going to remove this tub cover that is attached to the outer tub with plastic tabs around the perimeter. We simply need to push down on the tub cover at the same time that we're pulling outward on the tabs to release them. Do that all the way around the tub. Now once we release them all, lift that tub cover off and set it aside. Now next we need to remove the inner basket. It's held in place with four half inch bolts. So we'll use our ratchet again. Let's pull the bolts all the way. Out. We'll just grasp the top of that tub, rock it gently, break it free from the hub, and then lift it up and straight out of the washer. Now, if you happen to know a local service company that will loan you this spanner wrench and adapter tool for that seal, you can use those to remove that. It simply slides over the veins on the side of that seal, and the wrench fits into three of those pivot points, and we're simply going to knock it with a hammer counterclockwise to loosen it. Just make sure the wrench is firmly into that adapter, and then using a fairly heavy hammer, we'll loosen that. Now, if you don't happen to have this tool, you can remove the old hub with a large pair of slip joint or water pump pliers, grasp the edge of that, 
and turn it until it unthreads. So we'll unthread that off of the transmission. Slide it up off the agitator shaft and then we can discard the old one. And before we install the new one, we're going to clean that exterior of that agitator shaft with a little bit of solvent just to remove any grease or debris that may be on that. And once we've cleaned that shaft off, just verify that the new seal does have an adequate amount of lubrication and carefully slide it down that shaft. And thread it by hand at first. Make sure we don't get it cross threaded. And again, if you don't have this tool or access to that tool, you can use a pair of pliers to tighten that on. It will probably damage some of these veins, but that's not critical to the operation of the washer. You simply get a good grip on them and tighten it securely. Now once we have that tightened in place, we can go ahead and put the inner basket back in. Now when putting the basket back in place, we want to make sure that we line up the bolt holes. And make sure that we rock that tub so that it's sitting flush on that center hub. And make sure all four bolts will thread easily into that hub before you tighten any of them. And if you find any that are going in a little difficult, you may need to maneuver the tub back and forth a bit to better line up those holes. And then we can go ahead and tighten all four of them. And then just make sure that we snug all four of those bolts nice and tight with our ratchet. And now we can put the tub cover back in place. And you'll note with that tub cover that we have one large tab that fits towards the front of the tub. So we want to make sure that we have all of our tabs outside of the outer tub before we snap any in place. Then line up the large one on the front, press down on the tub cover, and then make sure the tab snaps into place. And then just go around the perimeter of the tub cover and make sure all of them are engaged. Now we can put the agitator back in. Simply set it over the agitator shaft. Let the spines line up. It should go just about to the bottom of the tub. Now, if your model used the auger style agitator, it probably separated when you took it out. So we need to just make sure that these slots line up with the fins on the agitator base. But we also need to make sure that the bolt is firmly into place. Now, the easiest way to do that is to set the bolt in the socket on top of your extension 
Fit it up through the opening in the auger. Until it lines up in the hole. Then while keeping some pressure on it, we'll line up that auger to the agitator base. And then we can begin to thread that bolt into the agitator shaft. Use your ratchet to tighten it in place. And then we can put the fabric softener dispenser cover on. So we snap it into place. Next, we'll put our front panel on if you've removed yours. And we just want to make sure that we line up the slotted openings in the bottom of that front panel with the two clips that are secured to the base of the washer. Now, as we tilt that front panel up, we need to make sure that we line up those locating pins with the slotted holes on the lip of that front panel. When they're properly lined up, we should be able to put that front panel tight up against the cabinet, and then we can secure it with the two screws. Secure it with the retaining screw. Do the same on the opposite side. And now we're ready to lower our main top down. And we again want to make sure that we line up these locating pins with corresponding holes in the bottom of the main top so that we can clip it over these spring clips. Now that we have the front panel secured, we're going to lower that top down onto the spring clips. Make sure it engages both sides. And now we're ready to push the washer back into position. You're now ready to reconnect the power and your repair is complete.